What do you think of Commerce Secretary Ross's comments? Or is this 40,000 level, or could we actually see a potential longer-term deal be struck here? I think he's uh, right. I think uh, the devil will be in the detail. And by putting um, U.S. Trade Representative uh, Robert Lighthizer in charge of the negotiations, um, I think we can look at the detail that was provided by him in this um, so-called Section 301 report that was published last March, which uh, goes into the allegations that are being made against China uh, in great detail. And I've read the report very carefully and taught several classes about it um, in my course at Yale. And I have to reluctantly say that uh, this report makes a very weak case in trying to justify uh, tariffs and the risk of a trade war. Why? Well, it breaks it down, it breaks these charges down into uh, four pieces. The, um, the case for forced technology transfer through joint ventures, which um, there certainly is a transfer, but the idea that this is forced is there's no evidence whatsoever presented on that. The case for technology transfer through China's uh, M&A um, uh, going out policy, uh, acting as a predator, gobbling up our companies, that's also unsubstantiated by data. We have detailed M&A data from China over 13 years, um, and the, the tech deals are a very small piece of that. The third piece is the illegal state support through industrial policies, claiming that China alone uh, engages in state-subsidized and supported policies. Uh, China does do this. Uh, we know that, but it's hardly unique. It's a practice well done by Japan, Germany, and even the United States. And finally, cyber hacking, the fourth piece, um, the charges are very serious, but the ones documented in Lighthizer's report all predate the um, uh, September 2015 summit on cyber that uh, had an accord uh, uh, signed by Presidents Obama and Xi. Very little evidence is provided since then. So it's a weak case. Uh, there's a lot of detail there. Uh, and I agree with Wilbur Ross that we'll have to look carefully at that detail. I don't know. I, you know, I, I speak to a number of CEOs, including one yesterday, who said, yes, forced technology transfer is a very real thing. IP theft, something we really, truly, as people who do you know, business in China, are concerned about. You speak to the military defense community, they have a very specific take on all of this, too. It sounds like, based on what you're saying and the fact that you believe this is a weak argument, that tariffs may be here to stay. Well, I just think that if we're going to go down this road, that, you know, this has to be fact and evidence-based um, uh, assessment of the risks. Um, and, you, you, you know, Morgan, you said with all due respect, well, I speak to this CEO or that CEO. We can't uh, go down this road of, of uh, uh, leveling charges based on hearsay or innuendo. I was also a senior executive on a joint venture between Morgan Stanley and China for 15 years. We built China's first investment bank, and there was nothing that was forced in the way that we partnered uh, with our colleagues from the China Construction Bank to build this investment bank. So for every uh, uh, piece of innuendo you can present, there's plenty on the other side. We need to be much more fact-based, which is always a problem, I think, with the Trump administration. So then with the Dow down about 200 points right now, definitely some of the shine coming off of these uh, initial headlines from the G20 over the weekend. Are investors right to be concerned and skeptical about where this goes from here? Well, look, we saw a, um, uh, a sigh of relief rally yesterday because the, uh, the worst case scenario did not come uh, to pass in the aftermath of this uh, dinner Saturday night in, in Buenos Aires. But, you know, once the, uh, the bounce um, uh, has, has concluded, now we really have to be careful in assessing where these negotiations are about uh, to go. I mean, we had lots of confusion, no detail. Uh, we had one statement yesterday that the, the clock didn't start till January 1. Now we go back and say the clock did start on December 1. Uh, we have no specific um, uh, uh, list of the uh, the massive purchases that China allegedly has promised to make. Uh, we have some broad understanding that it's in energy uh, and in agricultural products, but there's no specific list. And again, 
uh, the details of the charges that are made by the chief negotiator, Robert Lighthizer, our trade representative, uh, are on very, very shaky ground. It's a, it's a long report, 182 pages long. It's, 100, it's got 1,139 footnotes. You would think that there's enough in there to chew on to, to really uh, uh, push these negotiations ahead uh, with, with, with great clarity. But if you, if you read all the footnotes, and I can assure you I've done that, if you read all the 182 pages, I can assure you I've done that, uh, you end up with more questions than answers in trying to assess the veracity of these charges. 